Oftentimes, uh, when you're part of a collaborative design environment, you're going to be asked to share a 3D model with maybe a customer or some other third party. Uh, what this means, uh, or could potentially mean, is that if you have a 3D model, that's basically all of your intellectual property. Anybody um, who opens it up could conceivably reverse engineer your product. So customers find themselves in a situation where they want to give some of the data but not all of it. So take for example this electrical enclosure. Uh, we've got sort of the the exterior footprint of it which would be fine to share with a customer but maybe we don't want to show them all the stuff that's under the hood. So what we have in Solid Edge are a couple of options that will allow us to simplify an assembly. We all know already that we can simplify parts. For example, you see these fasteners right here. Um, if I right click on the assembly here and ask it to use the simplified parts, that'll actually take some of the detail out. Um, those are standard parts fasteners, so they automatically come with a simplified version. But again, we want to hide some of the interior detail and indeed entire models in this. So I'll just turn that back on and let's have a look at simplifying an assembly. So this is done in a separate environment which we can access through tools right here, Simplify, and that will take us into uh, these two options here. And I'll start with the visible faces. This is sort of the fastest way to do it. And basically what this does is if we use this option, it will process the model for us and identify which faces and parts are hidden and which ones are not. So if we do a preview here uh, and I hide the um, cover for example you're gonna see that it's, hi it's identified all that equipment inside uh, as an interior face. The other thing we can do is we can exclude parts based on size. So if I dial this up, you'll notice that it starts to highlight our fasteners. And we can accept that and exclude that from the model. So what we're left with with our simplified assembly is something that looks on the exterior exactly like our 3D model. But in fact, if we turn on those hidden lines, you're going to notice that we don't have anything in there that's going to give away anything um, of what's inside. So this is a nice fast way to make uh, a lightweight and hidden version of your model based on what faces are visible and what are uh, enclosed. You can also go and save this part out as a as its own part and that's the single part file that you can send to your customer. You can also in the save as options change this to any sort of uh, or a parasolid file which is sort of a CAD neutral. So that works really well for uh, an environment where you have uh, a clearly defined sort of interior and exterior faces. It's a nice and fast way to do that, uh, but it doesn't always work. Let's take a look at another example. And here um, we have a fairly large assembly, uh, but we don't necessarily have faces that are entirely concealed, or at least not many parts that are entirely concealed. So that approach might not give us the result we want. So let's take another look at creating simplified assembly, which is the model approach. And what this basically lets you do is it lets you provide some manual input to create a simplified single part model um, based on very much dumbed down geometry. So if I go into that, you'll see we're actually in an ordered part, which is embedded here in the, um, in the assembly. We also still have access to our views, so I'm going to drop down um, and just turn on a single pulley to demonstrate how this works. Uh, a lot of other CAD systems have a simplified uh, environment that works on suppressing features, uh, which is good except your features have to have been constructed in such a way that suppressing one will give you the result you want. In Solid Edge we have the added uh, issue that we've um, you know, synchronous modeling basically takes us beyond the need for features. So the approach we have is a way to rapidly generate geometry based on um, the outer extents of parts. And I'll show you what I mean. I've started this enclosure command and I'm going to set it to an inside cylinder using assembly components. And what that means is that if I click on two components and hit my check mark and then give it a reference plane to define the axis of the cylinder, it's going to create a cylinder based on the extents of those parts. So this becomes sort of the first feature in this simplified single component assembly. Now we've got a couple of ways we can define this geometry. We can also do a box and we can define, define it based on the full part or based on something called local geometry. Now right now we don't have any local geometry other than the cylinder we created but we can add local geometry 
with the part copy by clicking on faces of individual parts. So I'm going to click on some faces that I will later use to sort of define uh, the uh, extents of our uh, part here. I'll just spin that around and grab the outside here. So these faces, I don't need all of them. I just need a couple that are just going to that I can use. And what this will let me do is it'll let me go back to that enclose enclosure command and pick certain features within a part to define a box. So I can actually break a part down into several simplified pieces of geometry. I'll just do that one more time with the top bit, grabbing some relevant spots and create a block. Now for every one of these you create, you see it's created a body here and we can highlight those by double clicking on them and remember you have access to all of these features up here so we can actually add detail just using simple part features. For example, I'll give that a 3 inch chamfer on this side and maybe a, a, a 2 inch chamfer on this side just to kind of make it look a little more resemble that part. So there we've got a simplified version of this kind of pulley assembly here, just based on sort of three very simple pieces of geometry. Let's take a look at some more, to look at some other ways we can do this. I'm going to turn all of the pulleys on, so you see we've got quite a few. And I'll use that same technique down here, this time with an inside cylinder, and using that assembly component, which will be these two parts, that'll help me define that cylinder. And again, you still, you do need to click on an axis to give it that direction the cylinder is going to go. Now once I have that, I can go and continue and make an individual cylinder for all these tracks, but we've got some features that will give us a shortcut. One is called Duplicate Body. And what Duplicate Body does is it lets you select one of these uh, bodies that you've made in your simplified model and pick a from part and then another two part. And you notice that this is actually a different part, but it's more it's an it's the same enough that the same simplified geometry will apply. So when I hit check mark, it extends that same feature to that next part. Now that's not where it stops. We can go back into that step and click on this duplicate body. And that'll actually find all the duplicate parts in my selection set and extend that piece of geometry to them. So that's a nice fast way of kind of duplicating your effort, or, or not duplicating your effort rather, um, and creating these over and over again. We'll do that one more time. This time I'll pick up on all three of those pieces of geometry I made for this pulley and bracket assembly, and I'll just extend that to the next one, and it'll create that there. All right, let's turn on the tracks now. I'll keep the tracks and the pulleys on. Uh, notice that in Solid Edge we can have multiple display configurations showing at once. But let's take a look at how we might tackle something like this. And, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box enclosure based on the geometry that's going to that's going to capture, you know, one of these links within uh, the track. And I'll pick a coincident plane and that creates a box for me. Now I want to give this a little bit more detail and remember I have access to all of my feature commands here. So I may place a cutout on this and this is sort of the point where you can give this as much or as little detail as you want so I may kind of trace the outside of this part maybe even put an arc in there it's all kind of up to you how much or how little detail you want to provide and maybe just for aesthetics complete that with a couple of tangent relationships All right, so what that's going to let me do is get sort of a, a simple version of, of this just based on a very quick sketch. Uh, and when I'm happy with what I've got, I'll finish that cutout, turn my hidden edges back on, and just remove that material. Okay, so there we've created... Um, you know, a single block with some detail to represent that link. I may add uh, a round on either side of this too just to add it a little bit more detail. And again, this is up to you how much or how little detail you want. Of course, having done that, we can then click on that part and use the duplicate body to copy that feature all across uh, the, tr the uh, track assembly. Alright, let's turn on the last of those. 
I'll turn all the parts on. And we'll just go through the other pieces that we want to include to sort of capture the, you know, the, the size, the footprint of this part without disclosing too much detail. Notice too that you can click on multiple parts to sort of capture uh, that uh, the size of a cylinder or whatever you're putting in there. It's really handy if you kind of want to go, you know, from one end to the other. Maybe grab these outside pieces here and create another cylinder. We'll use a box and grab some of this stuff. And maybe one more cylinder here. If at any time you want to take a look at the progression of your simplified model, you can just hide that previous level and see where you've come so far. Now, one thing you may run into is you may think that, well, there's a few parts in here that I want to include because they're crucial. I actually want the actual geometry. And in that case, I use that same part copy method, only this time I grab the entire body and bring it into the assembly or rather my simplified part. So I'll do that one more time, click on this part, and in this case I want to grab all of it and bring it in. And you see that's actually going to add it here under construction body. We've got these two parts that I've just added. And if we want to include them as part of the model, we just have to right click on them and toggle them to construction body. So if we take a look, we actually have that full level of detail. Where you might want to use this technique is if you have a part that's got some critical mounting features. For example, this axle here um, has a hole pattern that I may want to copy. So in this case, I'll grab that whole part like that, and once that's brought in, just move that into a construction body. And if we, again, hide that previous level, you see we've got all that detail in there. You can do that with an entire part, or if you just want to select maybe just a face that's got some critical detail, you can do that just by switching it to face and grabbing that outside face. Another good technique um, to give that a little bit of depth so it's not just a, a, a surface is to use the thicken command and give it some sort of a thickness. So you can see once that's all done we have a nice model of the part that has as much or as little detail as we need and only where we've specifically uh, specified does it have precise geometries because that's all we want to pass along to a third party. Now if we go back out into the top level of the assembly we can toggle, uh, we can turn that assembly on or off and toggle between our simplified and our design and just like with the previous method we can right click on that simplified body and save it out as its own part and that's what we would pass off to a third party so you got a couple of options when creating simplified assemblies in solid edge and really it's a matter of how much detail do you want to include